AMP intro review is what we're talking about. And so remember that this is a review for a specific anatomy and physiology class. Always do what your teacher wants you to do and always study all, all the highlighted material for me. Not just this, but I think this will be a nice review for your first test or part of it anyway, because we're going to follow up with chemistry and also the cell. So look for those videos. Remember to like, comment, and share. That's what makes community on YouTube. Please do that. Anatomy is the structure of the body and physiology is the function. Cells are the basic unit of life and cells working together make up tissues. And we know that the study of tissue is called histology and the study of cells is called what? Cytology, right? Okay, we learned that muscles help us move. And remember this, when we think about nerves that go to muscles, we think about motor nerves. And motor means movement. If you are hot, your muscles can shiver and produce heat to make you warmer. The cardiovascular system is your heart and your blood vessels. And this is what acts as a pump to move oxygen to your tissues, pull CO2 out of your tissues, also moving lots of nutrients and other things throughout your body. Anatomical position is something I want you to think about more than you think that you need to think about it. Feet roughly shoulder width apart, toes pointed forward, and the palms facing forward with the thumbs outward. That is anatomical position, roughly. What means front? Anterior. And what means back? Posterior. Uh, what means top? Superior or cranial. And caudal means what? Inferior. Inferior. Okay, very good. If I talk about the elbow in relation to where it joins onto my arm, joins onto my body, I say that it is proximal to the wrist, or I say that the wrist is distal to the elbow. I might say something like that. Remember that the middle part of the body is the axial portion. This is the head, the spine, the ribs. And the appendicular portion is what hangs off of that. So we're talking about the shoulder girdle, the pelvic girdle, the arms and the legs. Remember appendix is something hanging off. So the appendix itself is just a, an organ that hang, or a little piece that hangs off of the end of the cecum of the large intestine, the colon. Here are a few words that I do not use on a daily basis. And so I specifically wanted to bust these out in the video. I do not say anti-cubital for the front of my arm. I do not say popliteal for behind my leg. I don't do that. I don't say sural for calf. I don't say crural for shin. I don't say that. I don't say mental for chin. I don't say buckle for cheek. I don't say acromial for shoulder. So these are some of the ones that are kind of important for in a science scheme because they're not words that you and I use on a daily basis. Remember that thumb is pollux, and so what would foot be? Everybody say hallux. Hallux. hallux very good. All right. Remember that an imaginary plane that goes right down the middle of the body, body is called the sagittal plane. So we would say that something further away from the, the midline is a lateral. Something closer to the midline would be what? Medial. medial. So we would say that the chest is medial to the shoulder. It's closer to the midline. Separating the front part of the body from the back part is the coronal plane. And then if we separate the, the top part of the body from the bottom part of the body, that is what? It's called the transverse plane. The dorsal cavity is your brain and your spinal cord, and your ventral cavity would be your thoracic, diaphragm, abdominal, pelvic cavities. Remember that there are different layers surrounding different organs in your body, and it's kind of neat how that your heart is beating 24-7, 365, but yet it doesn't rub a blister. That's because it's kind of beating in a lubricated sac. The same thing with your lungs as you breathe in and out. And these are called pericardial. If they're around the heart, they're called pleura. If they're around the lungs, they're called peritoneal. Peritoneal if they are around body organs. On the heart, there is a 
visceral pericardium that lays directly on the heart. And then there is another layer called the parietal pericardium, and it has two layers. There's an outer fibrous layer and an inner serous layer, which secretes the serous fluid, which kind of helps lubricate between that little thin space between the outer layer and the inner layer. Around the lungs, there's a parietal pleura. There is a visceral pleura that lays, lies directly on your lungs. And around your body organs, like for the, the kidney, for instance, there is a parietal peritoneum and a visceral peritoneum that lies directly on the kidney itself. The midline of your chest cavity has a certain name. I say mediastinum. I think some people say mediastinum. Either one might be acceptable, but we're talking about the heart, the trachea, the esophagus, the thymus gland. We're talking about those being the contents of the middle portion of the chest. There are several different well, we're actually looking at two different possibilities for the abdomen. We think about right upper quadrant gallbladder, right lower quadrant appendix, left upper quadrant stomach, left lower quadrant could be kidney, could be ovary, could be colon, something like that. It's a pretty simple system. And then there is a nine region system that we look at. There's right and left hypochondriac, right below the ribs. There is epigastric, there is umbilical, right and left lumbar right iliac, left iliac, and hypogastric. And the hypogastric area is the area that lies directly over the bladder. The last thing I want to talk about in this first unit of introduction to AMP is homeostasis. And when we say homeostasis, we just mean systems that help maintain the internal environment is the negative feedback system. And, and the idea there is that if your brain senses that you're too hot, your hypothalamus says we're hot here, sweating may result. And then as heat leaves the body and the core body temperature falls back to that set point, then the whole system is shut off. That's a negative feedback system considered to be a healthy system. I wasn't trying to imply that positive feedback systems are unhealthy, but the two that we think about are the birthing process and the clotting mechanism it is interesting how that the body does intuitively have the wisdom to know when to end those processes, but those are processes that keep adding and adding. The uterus contracts, more oxytocin is released from the pituitary, the cervic, cervix dilates, the baby engages, the uterus contracts. This is a, I don't want to say a vicious cycle, but it is a cycle that keeps moving in the direction of moving the baby out of the body and then the placenta. And then eventually the uterus contracts kind of down, back down closer to its normal size. So that concludes a brief review of introduction to anatomy and physiology.